Welcome! In this video we will dem demonstrate how to create a wind power plant in Simulink. For the model we will use the wind tur turbine induction generator pre-made block. It needs to be connected to a reactive power source as, as you can see from ports A, B and C. Of course it's a three-phase uh, generator. Now we'll create the reactive power source. First, we'll use the three-phase program of voltage source to, to provide the three-phase power. Um, it has the A, B, and C ports and the zero for ground. We'll, con we'll connect it to the transformer as it will be done in real life um, because the voltage source uses a, a, a high, high voltage. We'll set it to 25 kilovolts. Uh, all all parameters used in this model come from a pre-made model found in Simulink called a, a wind farm. Uh, we have converted all the values to a single wi wind turbine. The load flow generator is, is left as swing. And then now we'll put in the parameters for a transformer. The winding two should be set to Y n and we'll leave the saturable core as uh, unchecked. The nominal power will be set to four mega, mega volt amperes. And we'll set the winding one to 25 thousand uh, as per the voltage from the voltage source and then we will transform this down to 575 volts because this is what's used in the wind turbine induction generator We leave the magnetization resistance as is and set the magnetization inductance to infinite. Um, we could model this with a different uh, different values, but um, uh, it's very relevant for the wind turbine itself. And all advanced settings are left as they are. Both the transformer and the voltage source needs to be connected to a ground. So, and the transformer needs to ground needs to be connected through a, a res resistor, so we'll set that up now. We're just using the resistor and setting the resi resistance to 66 ohms. simply using the ground block. The voltage source also needs to connect to ground. Finally we add the capacitor. The capacitor can be used to create reactive power when connected to a voltage source. We're setting the we're setting it to delta connection. And using a nominal face-to-face -face voltage of 575 as set up in the transformer. It shall not com com produce any active power as this is of course left to the wind turbine. No inductive power and create four megavolt amperes reactive of, um, uh, no sorry, 400,000 uh, volt amperes directive. And finally we connect all the branches together. Uh, 
and then finally we connect the the capacitor in parallel with the uh, transformer the reactive power source is now complete We'll just put out the labels of all the voltages and the power levels to easier for for later reference, basically. Now we'll set up the generator data in the wind turbine induction generator. We want this generator pr to provide 1.5 megawatts of power. By default, it's set by 1.5 me megawatts divided by 0 0.9, so we'll just remove that and leave the other parameters as they are. We'll increase the base wind speed to 12, because this, this is a common wind base wind speed, or used in many different wind power plants. Of course, these parameters can be changed e easily later on uh, to, to uh, simulate different uh, wind turbines. As you can see, at the maximum, w at the base wind speed, we get a maximum power of one, one PU, or one, uh, which basically is the maximum value. We will now construct the output stage of the model. From M, there will be several outputs. So we put a bus selector to choose which outputs we're going to use. And if we double click here, we delete these uh, default signals and uh, select our P and Q, which is active and reactive power. And since the outputs are in PU, that's per unit, we need to put gains to get it back to actual power. So if we put the gain uh, 1.5 million, we'll get back to uh, We then insert outputs so we can retrieve the values that's being put out by the model. We can rename them to P out and Q out. So we later will find them easier. And then we connect the bus to the gate uh, again and to the outputs. And for this example, we will use a scope for the active power. So we will be able to study it in a graph and a display for the reactive. So we'll just see the value on the screen. And we will now construct the inputs. On the wind turbine induction generator block, we have a trip. And that's basically a switch that determines if it's on or off. So if 
we set an input here so uh, if the trip is one it will shut off the turbine so And then we set a second input for the wind speed. And both of these inputs are external, so they can be controlled from outside uh, Simulink. And then we need to set up the power GUI. We set it to a phaser because the wind turbine works with phasers. <laughs> we set the base power to 10 million volts amperes and then we show it in volts and watts and that's it. Uh, now you could think that we can run the model but we don't have an external input to the wind so instead we for this example we use a step that we configured to go from 1 to 12 meters per second since 12 is our base wind, wind speed And now we're almost done. We just need to set the model configuration parameters. Uh, we switch to fixed step size and set it to something small like 0 0.001 and let the simulation run for 30 seconds. So, if we run the simulation now, we will see on the display the consumed reactive power, since it's negative. And if we open the scope for the active power, we see some strange lines. And that's because we don't display all the values. So we need to change in history and set no limits for data points. But we still don't still don't have any values, so we need to run the simulation again. And now it's done, and we can see if we zoom out that we have some transients, and then we get a stable steady state value for the power. As expected, the value of the signal is approximately 1.5 megawatts, which is the rated power for the wind turbine.